What do you think are some of the reasons that the Cuban government is perceived so negatively by the United States? Yeah, simply because, you know, the, the U.S. is no different to the way Colombia is run. It's, it's very similar. It's not just Colombia, but any other colonial uh, co uh, country in, in the Americas. It's, it's the same thing, you know. A, a minority of uh, Europeans, powerful European political class and uh, powerful economic class have control of the, of the country. In, in Cuba, it's not like that. And, and you see it in society, like, it, I don't know, you don't have to study it in that much detail to realize that, that Cuba is much more democratic. I like what Fidel Castro says. He, he says, uh, you know, he, he always used to wear the military attire and, and he got asked in an interview, why are you always wearing military clothes? And he said, because we're still in a war. We haven't won the war yet. And that's it, like under the circumstances, uh, Cuba has been able to create a system which is, which is, which is just, which is uh, democratic, not fully democratic because you can't be fully democratic in a, when you're in a war. You can't open up. It's the problem in Venezuela and Bolivia, which is Evo Morales, Nicolás Maduro, Hugo Chavez, they didn't come to power through violence. They didn't overthrow the system. So they accepted that they they had to be part of the system. So they were voted in. So they have they have to to, to a very large extent respect that so-called democratic uh, system, political system they have there. Which means that they have to accept the uh, old ruling classes having very powerful political organizations, very powerful economic uh, organizations to disturb the, the, the process of revolution. Um, but in Cuba, you don't have that. In Cuba, you have, uh, because, because they understood you can't have a fully democratic system when you're under uh, attacks from uh, uh, big powerful forces in, in the United States, Europe and elsewhere. Uh, and and it's a transitional it's a transitional process it's a transitional uh, system. Obviously, ideally, in the future, we would want uh, on the whole of the continent all of our nations to be fully de democratic, uh, so that we we build a system where uh, everyone's represented, where everyone's uh, needs are met, etc. Uh, but right now, we can't have that sort of system when you, when you have somebody constantly on your back attacking you. You can't have that, uh, and I, and I and that's why I, I believe that Cuba is, is the best way to go about it right now in this tr transitional period is is to have a a one party uh, state where the uh, where the government uh, are the government of the people and and they defend it at, at all costs and they do not allow any other political organization political class to disturb the process of revolution the revolution of the majority of the people which are indigenous and African people uh, funnily, funnily enough, in Cuba, Fidel Castro is actually a, a criollo, a white settler. Uh, his father was from Spain too. His mother was, was from Spain too. Galicia, I think, I believe he, he was from. Um, and what Fidel Castro, what Fidel Castro did was, when they won the revolution, they implemented a, a land reform in order to make. Um, the distribution of land much more equal uh, among the people and one of the first things he did was to sign away his father's lands wow so he signed it away and, and gave it away to the people and and you know that sh that in itself shows you know he was he was willing to give away his own privileges give away his family's assets colonial assets in order to benefit society and that's how it should be on, on the whole of the continent.